want to talk about a very fundamental process. Some might even call this manifestation, but it's more of the scientific aspect of manifestation, or polarization for that matter. And one of the frustrating things with our universe, or my universe, let's say that, my universe and this reality here on Earth, is how science is still pushing forward the closed system, the closed system of reality. When in fact, in my honest, humble opinion, it's indeed an open system. It's very open. But again, that's my opinion. That's the beautiful thing about our reality is we all have all our unique perspectives. What if perspective is this open system? And so it gets into a fundamental process between the infinite and the finite. And how do we transverse those two? And there's a boundary layer between these two, the, the infinite and the finite. If you have a a plane, it's a blank plane, you make a circle upon it, all of a sudden you just created this line, this boundary between the infinitely small and infinitely large. Some would also call the infinitely small something finite. But really, not really, it depends on how you look at it, the infinitely small can also be considered zero. Well, what we usually consider the infinite to be infinitely large. They're quantitatively different things, but qualitatively they're still both the infinite. Now, this idea of an open system, if it's in infinite in nature, and that within this space, this density of space is an infinite amount of potential energy, which really means it's a, a, a state of neutrality. How do we polarize this neutrality and bring it into this reality? And so, what I'm pushing forth is the idea of really getting into systems of perpetual motion and how we can sustain these systems. So we're not only looking at radioactive cycles, but generoactive cycles. And perpetual motion, in the traditional sense, is not possible, but in an open system, it absolutely is. We start to consider generoactive cycles. And that requires the polarization of the ether. There's another trigger word for you scientists, is the ether, which you can imagine as a liquid. And this liquid is everywhere, and it's static, neutral state. It's in a cubic structure, in that there is no refraction or reflection of the information. It is entirely neutral, a state of infinite potential. How do we polarize this infinite potential? That's a powerful thing to really, really understand, and how do we go about doing it? And so, let's start with this, go back to this boundary layer idea, this circle, but we can simplify it, okay, into a dot, the zeroth dimension, because I was just talking about the first dimension with the circle, it's easier to think about. But when you make a dot, a point in space, that really is the infinitely small. It's an infinitely small point in space, well, everything around it is the infinitely large. The zeroth dimension. This construct is your boundary, your fundamental boundary between everything and something. And so, how do we create this boundary? How does it, how does it exist? Well, let's start describing what this boundary is, what this singularity exists as. And so, if the infinite wants to perceive itself, essentially curiosity. And the funny thing is, today, the, the Mars lander curiosity is making its big landing on Mars. And so it is this fundamental thing of curiosity, which brings us all into existence. And so, if you have an infinite awareness, all-knowing, all-pervading, everything, but it's in this infinite state, if it wants to perceive what it really is, because it really can't, as an infinite awareness. If it wants to perceive an aspect of itself, a single entity, it must polarize itself. One of these fundamental polarizations, which I've talked about on my channel, is forgetting and remembering. Because once you forget something, it's forgetting something out of the process. It opens doorways that we can never believe existed before. Because the existence was silence. So we gotta create some noise 
to experience what kind of music can we create from this silence? And so, polarizing the ether. Well, what happens when you start to polarize the ether? What's the actual mechanism behind this polarization? I, mean, I personally feel this is one of the things that's drastically lacking in physics is the true understanding of these mechanisms. We're trying to understand the mechanism of mass with the Higgs boson. And in my honest opinion, it's going in the wrong direction to really understand the mechanism. Oh, we, under, we have this Higgs boson to explain why mass exists. Well, the average person still doesn't understand why mass exists. So how about I try to explain something qualitatively as simple as possible using Occam's razor as the simplest answer. It's usually the best about how this actually takes place. And I have another video called The Prime Mover of Energy. And it talks about this process, but we're gonna connect some dots here in that for the infinite to perceive itself, it needs to forget. It needs to forget everything. It needs to forget who it is. Have this rapid expansion of forgetting with extreme compression of perception extreme perception into a specific thing. So, as I'm gonna elaborate on this concept, one of these ideas is a prism, okay? And so a prism polarizes space. This is fundamental with a triangle. And so when I was talking about space being a cubic structure, it's a neutral structure. It has no refraction or reflection of the information in the system. Otherwise, the information is in a neutral static state. But when you have a prism and you get this triangular form and you have energy move through it, such as light, electromagnetic waves, it causes it to polarize. It takes white light, well, let's say it's white light, because you can put any light through it, but white light, which contains all information, and you have it go through this prism, you can see the respective parts of the light. Okay? And so this analogy is a fractal analogy of what's happening with the infinite and the finite. You can call the infinite this pure white light. It contains all information. And it goes through a process like a prism, which causes it to reflect its, refract its parts. And so let's say you want to experience, you know, the color orange. I mean, it's fully experienced this color. Okay? Well, the moment of experiencing orange, you gotta forget blue, you gotta forget green, you gotta forget red, you gotta forget yellow, purple, you gotta forget all the colors and put your perception into orange. Okay? This also relates to why you can't do love 24 7. Um, your perception can only be in one place at one point. So, really, it's about moving forward in a state of love. A little metaphysical side note, because it all ties in. It really does. At least, I feel it does. And so, when you observe one thing, you have to forget everything else. Um, it's, it's a pretty big concept. And uh, so, you have a polarization of space-time to take place for this to happen. So with the Big Bang, it's really the big breath, as I've said before. Um, a rapid expansion and a rapid compression. Rapid expansion gives birth to the vacuum of space, while the rapid compression gives birth to the particles of space. But we don't talk about the midpoint neutrality of space, space-time, really, uh, where this all comes from. And when you can put your focus on a specific point in the space-time. You cause this compression. You cause the manifestation of particles. Matter. With the rapid expansion of the vacuum at the same time. When this happens, you start to create a pressure gradient throughout the system. Okay? You start to distort this cubic neutral structure of the ether. Let's just say a triangular form, like a prism. But when this happens, if you distort space in terms of forming a singularity, causing a rapid compression and a rapid expansion, you can then have this 
ether, this infinite state of consciousness, really awareness is, I feel consciousness is a higher level of awareness, base awareness. It allows it to refract itself through this point. Once you refract it through this point, what do you have on the other side of the singularity? What happens when you refract the infinite through a single point in space? You have a holographic projection of the creation, or the creator. Holographic, the holographic projection is the creation from the creator. This is all a hologram. At least, I feel it is. Maybe I gotta keep, keep up with these eye statements and stuff pissing people off, even though it might be a good thing for them. Why are you getting angry? Why are you getting angry with me tearing apart physics and, and cosmological ideas? Is it because I'm hitting at something deep with inside? There's another little metaphysical side note for you. <laughs> and uh, this idea of refraction, you're refracting the infinite into a finite perspective, a finite hologram of our reality. It's a big idea. And it requires a compression and expansion of our perception. Because in infinite awareness, there really is no perception. Perception requires an expansion and compression of that awareness. The compression is the focalization of your perception within the awareness. And when that happens, it allows the refraction of its being into a holographic reality. This is so fundamental, and the best, the best part, it's beautiful, it's simple, it makes me smile, it allows me to experience this, it allows me to experience, this ain't great to experience, is it, really, yeah, oh my god, thank god Asheville exists, thank god God exists, if God ex I don't know, that, that word's sort of taboo in our world, it really is, capital G, I really liked in classics where we talked about capital G and lowercase g, God, really help you understand what we were talking about. Again, I like the word infinite, it's sort of like depersonalized. I think the personalization is we're trying to put some finiteness on something that's not finite. That's sort of a, a big block. And so, this comes back to is when we start to see things as an open system, we can start to create energy, but it's really not creating energy, because energy cannot be created nor destroyed. That is true. It can only be polarized from a static state. This is the big thing, the really big thing in free energy, is how do you polarize something from a static state? Because if you can polarize it, you can grow things. This is the basis to growth in our reality. The universe is indeed expanding, but at the same time it's expanding, it's also contracting. Because Noon was really spot on about his third law of motion, of equal and opposite reactions. This is the basis to yin and yang, why yin and yang is so powerful in our reality. And so the idea of refraction and reflection are also these two opposing aspects in that all energy moves or interacts with all energy around it. This energy is really vibrations and understanding vibrational mechanics really takes us another step if you want to explore this further. And that when something comes in contact with something else, it does one of two things. It refracts the information or it reflects the information. The property of superconductivity is a state of pure reflection. And where we want to move our energy systems into is a reflection. I can get my hands superconducting. They are the waveguides to reflect the energy back and forth between my hands. And all the magic is happening in the dielectric in between it. Um, it, is, it is in dielectric materials we have a property called by by refrigerance or double refraction and causes a polarization in the light, one that is uh, a parallel wave and a perpendicular wave. And uh, the basis to quantifying this and understanding has to do with the dielectric permittivity of the material. That's an electrical property, as light is electromagnetic. And so really understanding the power in the dielectric and how the dielectric is a refracting material and conductors are a reflecting material. But we don't use our conductors the way we want them to and they tend to refract 
most of the information instead of reflecting. And when they refract, that's where you get heat, that's where you get current and amperage. You don't want that. You want your conductors to conduct the music. They reflect it back. It's a big concept. And so, I hope I connected some dots for you and made this as clear as possible and understanding the power of a singularity and the power of awareness to create this pressure system as the basis to physics. And that when you get the different densities within this ether and you start to distort the cubic structure of space, you start to refract and reflect the information within the system. It's the distortion which creates the reality. There's no distortion, it's static, it's purely cubic. And so it's beautifully simple. If you can jump on this bandwagon of wavelength I'm, I'm moving in right now. Because I'm loving it. It's, I mean, look at my smile. Isn't it contagious? I mean, there's so many light workers now who are just blossoming in the most beautiful of ways. And as we're coming to these realizations, these understandings, and moving away from theory, it brings such joy. Maybe that's the big metaphysical thing I can convey here. I kept stating, this is my opinion, this is my perspective, and it is. It is also my opinion that within me this is an understanding. This isn't theory. And the understanding is what brings true joy. Thank you.